Do you know what everyone says about you? They say that you're a homeschool jungle freak who's a less hot version of me. Why are you so obsessed with me? Why are you so obsessed with me? I don't spend my money on this, just so you know. Like, when people are like, why do you spend all your money on Amazon? I don't. Um, I mean, I spend some of my money on there, but a lot of this is Amazon sends me an allowance. 12 White Claws, couple Trulies, getting a nice drunk on, and going and spending $1,000 on Amazon. Inhibitions to the wind, money be Retirement, never heard of her savings, who cares? What am I doing wrong? So crazy how Instagram has like brainwashed me. I'm definitely deleting this. Marnie Stockhausen is a 30 something year old, self-proclaimed Amazon influencer and a serial social media scammer. That's not right, sorry. A serial network marketing boss babe from Asheville, North Carolina. With only 15,000 followers on her Instagram, she had another one that apparently had like almost 100,000 followers, but it got shut down. We'll get to that later. And less than 40,000 followers across her two different Facebook pages. You might be thinking, Chelsea, what are you doing? This is low hanging fruit. What's going on here? Well, buddy, hang tight because this one is truly a doozy. Since I am someone who covers internet scams, unethical influencers, multi-level marketing quite a lot on my channel, like that, it, that is what we do here. And I've been doing it for like, what, three years full time now. I'm really surprised that I have not seen more of her. And I'm not really sure why she hasn't been like sent to me a ton. Marnie Stockhausen was given the very fitting nickname Chief Hun on the anti-MLM Reddit page. And it got to the point where they were posting her so much that they had to make a rule where you couldn't do like singular posts of her and they had to have like a thread and then they had to make all these other rules. And then they were like, you know what? She's gonna get her own page. That's how much stuff that she was posting that was just insane and so scammy. She literally got her own subreddit, snark subreddit. And just a quick thank you to the girlies over there at Unique Presenter MS. <sighs> Y'all are amazing. Y'all, listen, the Reddit girlies, I love you. I appreciate you. Also, just a reminder, this is not a petting zoo. This is not an immersive experience. As we say on Reddit, do not touch the poop. Don't go interact with these people. Never interact with the people that are subjects of my videos or anyone I mention or entities, businesses, anything like that, please. Don't do that. Since this generation of internet girl bosses really loves to redefine words and just have their own language in itself, let's go over some key phrases and the actual definitions of them because words have meaning and we need to make that clear. Under the umbrella of direct sales, there is single level marketing and multi-level marketing. Single level marketing is where you receive commissions for sales from a company that you work for typically as a 1099 contractor. And then multi-level marketing is where you receive commissions for sales and also for recruiting other distributors to make sales and recruit other distributors. And you also make money off of their efforts as well. No matter what you call it, it's the same. Multi-level marketing, network marketing, social sales, direct sales, social marketing, social selling, affiliate marketing, digital marketing, direct marketing, social marketing. Over the years, the network marketing industry has really had to rebrand and they typically do it, I really, I feel like once a year, they do it or multiple times a year. And they'll do that in order to outrun the stigma in a way of the stigma stinky, stinky scam cloud that surrounds their industry as a whole. And that is because of people like me. And realistically, if you're watching these types of videos, probably people like you too. But as we know, a turd by any other name is just as stinky. More recently, individuals in this industry have been calling their hustles, their scam. They've been calling it affiliate marketing, digital marketing, digital sales, influencer marketing, and I think I already said affiliate marketing, <laughs> and social selling. It's just so much. And they'll be like, oh, it's not your grandma's MLM. And it's like, no, it's it's the same thing. Are you recruiting? Yeah, you are. It's just that now the internet is here. It's the same thing. Affiliate marketing and influencer marketing is when a brand pays a content creator for either just promoting their product, brand or service via a sponsored integration, which is usually a flat rate, or when we share an affiliate link and we get commission off of the sales we make through that link. That differs from direct sales as we aren't employees of that company or really a salesperson for them. At first glance, I thought that Marnie Stockhausen had only been involved in two MLMs, but let me tell you, the Marnie lore is truly cavernous. It is cavernous, it is 
dank it is dinky like a wet dog it's it's glorious honestly and i think it i think it might be my favorite before we get too far into this video i have something to share with you i recently found out that i have been charged every month for the remini app the editing app which is fine because i use it every month but for three different accounts why well today's sponsor rocket money is here to help Rocket Money is a personal finance app that helps you cancel subscriptions, lower bills, and manage your money better. I'm using Rocket Money to cancel unwanted subscriptions. It safely and securely identifies reoccurring charges and cancels unwanted subscriptions for you. You can even cancel them from within the app with just a couple of taps. No need to worry about customer service calls. I'm also using Rocket Money to set budgets since it'll analyze your spending habits to create a custom budget that'll work with your lifestyle. Rocket Money has helped save its customers up to $740 a year with over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. To save more and spend less, join the over 5 million members and join Rocket Money today. Go to rocketmoney.com slash Suarez or click the link in the description box to get started for free. You can also unlock even more features with premium. That's rocketmoney.com slash CC Suarez to get started for free. Thank you, Rocket Money, for sponsoring this video. Marnie was in the multi-level marketing company Unique from around 2017 until she was fired in 2020. You've got to do something pretty bad to be fired from a multi-level marketing company. Unique is pretty well known for their awful makeup posts from their reps and their fiber mascara that gives you spider leg-like lashes with a side of a potential eye infection. According to an article on the UNC Asheville student newspaper website, Marnie joined Unique in 2017 and was a social media mogul with her 30,000 followers. Marnie had a substantial downline in this MLM. At one point, she even claimed that she had over a thousand presenters or distributors in her downline. And she even spoke at events hosted by the company. While she was in Unique, she offered and allegedly charged for makeup services. In North Carolina, that's one of the states where an esthetician or cosmetology license is required to accept payment and charge people for makeup services. And the same goes for Tennessee, where she posted that she was traveling to to do bridal makeup for someone. And let's be clear, Marnie has neither of those. She does not have an esthetician license and she does not have a cosmetology license. Marnie also consistently did live streams, posted videos and posted photos marketing her unique makeup while being heavily, heavily filtered. And that's not only unethical, but that is false advertising as well. Selling a product with a filter, which would alter how the product appears, how it performs, and overall the quality of the product in general is insane. That is falsely advertising what you're selling. And Marnie's been doing this for years, and in my opinion, it doesn't seem like she has an issue with it at all. In early 2020, not only did, you know, the world collapse as we know it, but so did Marnie Stockhausen's girl boss facade. In June of 2020, a video had come to light that was filmed in the previous February, apparently, of Marnie rapping with a friend. And in this video, she quite clearly said a racial slur. I'll let you guess which one. I'll let you just actually watch the video. That nigga always gonna stand beside me. I don't give a fuck, bitch. That nigga always gonna stand beside me. I don't give a fuck, bitch. Cole Bigley, he gonna ride me. Every bitch is beside me. He can't tie me. He gonna ride me. After that, less than favorable old tweets had also been dug up too. Now, let me be clear. We've all done things and said gross things, most likely. Maybe even things that could have racist undertones. But we learn, we grow, and we do better. However, that's not the case for girl boss lay babe Marnie. Now Marnie did do multiple half and tone deaf apology videos and apology posts. And then, and then it seemed like she just started getting mad at like the backlash she was getting and was like kind of dismissive about it, saying that she doesn't understand why people follow her if they hate her. But in my opinion, it doesn't seem like she made any real attempts to educate herself on why her captions, her tweets, things like that could be seen as or were just straight up racist. She also did a live stream with another creator. I don't know who he was, but she did a live stream with someone and he was talking to her about, I guess they were talking about racism, something like that. I'll let y'all watch in a second. But she said in there that she wanted to volunteer and mentor young people of color 
at like the Boys and Girls Club or like a, a local organization like that to, you know, really like do what matters and like do the work. Well, guess what? We never saw anything about that ever again. And you can say, well, hey, every time you volunteer, like do you post it? No, but I'm not performative like this person is. And I don't post every single thing about my life like this person does. From what I've seen, I can almost, in my opinion, guarantee that if she was going to do that, she would have posted about it. But of course, as you're gonna learn a lot of times, 90% of the time with Marnie, in my opinion, promises and no follow through. You think about doing big brother, big sister, getting involved with, you know, people that actually need to see we are allies and we can work together and I can show you that you can be anything you want and it doesn't matter what your skin tone is. Now, Unique, where she was within like the top 0.001% of distributors or presenters as they call it, it doesn't really seem like they cared about the slay babe apology to her because they suspended her account. And then three days after that on June 20th, 2020, she had announced that she quit Unique, which that's a lie. <laughs> But don't worry, that didn't stop our slay girl boss babe from girl bossing. Now around February of 2020, really that's when like the like two week shutdown, you know, like flatten the curve or whatever the hell we thought we were gonna be doing. That's like when that took place or maybe that was in March. I feel like everything shut down right after my birthday, my 29th. Yeah, my 29th birthday, and that was that was March 20th. So anyways, things started to like shut down more at the end of February, and it really seems like she started promoting, just as an affiliate, not as a seller yet, started promoting the nail dashes, the glue on nails from Red Aspen, which I will say that's great timing. We're gonna get into that in a second, but, but by July 1st, 2020, which is a week and a half after announcing that she's no longer with Unique, she was already posting about building a team in Red Aspen. Red Aspen is a multi-level marketing company founded in 2017 that sells beauty products. However, they are best known for their glue on nails known as nail dashes that range from $12 to $20. Press on and glue on nail companies really thrived during the pandemic due to people being unable to go to nail salons and get their nails done. I know personally, prior to the pandemic, I was getting acrylics done every two weeks, like clockwork. I would go see my girl early in the morning on Fridays and I'd go into work late and then like work the late shift. And it was great, had that down. Then the pandemic happened and I started doing kiss nails. And I love kiss nails, gel fantasy. They're what, like eight bucks? Sometimes they're like nine bucks. And for that price, they're great, especially if you use the right glue and apply them correctly and prep your nail. And then like almost, what, two years ago, I found a place that I liked uh, that did Gel X nails. However, since having a baby, I can't drive out there and sit there for at least two hours in the salon, soaking off and getting a whole new set of Gel X once a month. I just don't have the time, I can't do it. So then I started using Kiss Nails again, loved them. And then now I'm on a Glamnetic kick. Dear God, I'm obsessed with these. I just feel like they're better quality and the glue is... Pretty great. Guess what? I'm gonna have affiliate links for those linked down below. What do you know? Disclosing an affiliate link properly. And then if you don't wanna support me, just go ahead and Google it. You're fine. But yeah, I really like them. They're like thicker and I feel like they're like better quality for the price. And these are really, I'd say about the same price as the Red Aspen ones, but the quality from what I have heard is better and the designs are way cuter and it's not an MLM. Now making money in a multi-level marketing company is all about timing. Either you need to get in when it first starts so that you can be one of the truly first people in the company to have a downline. Then realistically, like everyone who joins or a big percentage of people who join will eventually just be in your downline. So between the timing of Marnie joining a glue on nail multi-level marketing company during a pandemic where people were stuck in their homes. And even after, you know, things started to open and we could go back to work, a lot of people couldn't, but more people could go back to work. Salons still weren't open. Mine was probably closed for like almost a year. It was crazy. So that paired with the fact that Marnie already had a massive downline in Unique. And then also at this time had a pretty big social media following, not only on Facebook, but on Instagram as well. All those things put together really just were a recipe for her to rank up to the highest rank within, I'm not even joking, six months, which is pretty unheard of for someone who is coming into the MLM, not at the very beginning. They're coming in, yes, sure, at the height of it and like when it's doing really, really well and realistically probably the best time to join, but when the company's already been around for three years. Just after a month of posting about starting her Red Aspen business, she made brand director, which is the seventh rank 
in the company. By October 26, 2020, she hit senior brand director, which is the eighth rank. While on a live stream, she claimed that she had 1,700 distributors in her downline when she left Unique, and that she at this point, in this chaotic timeline, had 183 in her red Aspen downline. In November 2020, she claimed that she had 230. 38 women in her downline who have sold over $170,000 in product. That would mean, according to my janky math and just glancing at the comp plan, she earned at least $60,000 in commission in just under five months. And that would have been just from her downline's sales and not what she would get from bonuses and recruiting people too, which typically you're paid more off of that. November 27th, 2020, she made executive brand director, which is the highest rank in Red Aspen. And in December 2020, she claimed that her commission check for November was just over $25,000. Now, according to the Red Aspen 2023 Income Disclosure Statement, 84.48% of their distributors make less than $500 annually. Now, keep in mind, that's pre-tax and before any expenses. Per the Red Aspen comp plan, you have to sell 120 PV personal volume to remain active every month. So to receive commissions every month to make money. And your own purchases do count towards that from what I have seen. And from what I've been told and read from not only Red Aspen and affiliated websites with them, but then also from distributors themselves. So that's spending $120 every month if you're unable to sell that much, which that's a, that's a lot. <laughs> so let's just be generous just for numbers sake and say that you are able to sell half of that. But then to make up for that lacking half of the PV requirement, you spend $60 in product every month. So that would be $720 annually. And then there's also the starter kit, which is $49 plus shipping. So that cost added to the 720 would be around $800. But don't forget the $899 website fee that you have to pay. It is free for your first three months, but after that you have to pay that amount. So that would be for nine months and that'd be about $81 added onto your expenses. So that gets us to around $881 annually. And let's be honest, that's that's lowballing it. I'm being I'm being very generous here. So let's rewind, okay? If around 84% of the distributors in Red Aspen, according to their 2023 income disclosure statement, are making $500 or less annually, and that's revenue, not profit. But then it's, I mean, pretty safe to say that most people are spending anywhere from 500 to 881 $900 a year with this company. Sounds to me like around 80% of Red Aspen distributors are in the negative. That's a lot. However, per the FTC, the average profit for multi-level marketing companies, for people in multi-level marketing companies, is zero. We knew that was the case. Meanwhile, our girl Marnie, our girl Marina, I don't know if that's her legal name. I think it's just Marnie. Our girl Marnie is arguably in the top 0.001% of this multi-level marketing company. And she claims to make over $250,000 a year. But again, that's before taxes and expenses. So just stay with me, humor me. Let's do a little bit of math, okay? Because y'all know I love not only like calling this out, but also making it clear, like this is all smoke and mirrors. I mean. I could be like, oh yeah, I make, we're in the middle of doing my taxes right now, girl. <laughs> but I just think it's so interesting how they will promote their revenue and not their profit because come on, <laughs> yikes. So let's pull back the curtain. So it has been alleged that Marnie will, instead of just going ahead and actually trying to sell the nail dashes or the products, whatever, that she will just go ahead and every month purchase her PV requirement amount. So that's about, someone said that at the level that she is at, it would be about $2,000 per month. Allegedly, all this is alleged, I'm not stating it as a fact, well, okay. Also, I'm not an accountant, a lawyer, or anything like that. And we're about to go over like percentages and taxes and stuff. So keep that in mind. I'm putting in like my own like professional experience. I don't wanna say like expertise because I'm not an expert in it. I just like, I, I'm i a full-time content creator and like I I, pay taxes. So like, I know. And all this stuff is really fascinating to me. And a lot of people don't know this. Also, from what I've seen this person, their business is crazy. Girl, you better hope the IRS don't come find you or the FTC for that matter. But that 2000 a month would be about 24,000 annually. Let's just for poops and giggles, say that she has 
$20,000 in expenses a year. I'd say for a content creator, like that's, that's okay. So $20,000 expenses, 250,000 that she's claiming at least for revenue for her business annually, that would bring us to around $230,000, right? Now, since she's a 1099 contractor for Red Aspen and realistically for Amazon and every other thing she promotes as content creators are, she would be hit with more taxes unless she has her business set up as an S corporation. And you can be an LLC being taxed as an S corporation. Like for instance, my business is an LLC S corp. But when you are making a certain amount of money per your state, per your guidelines, whatever you do, usually is better to have it taxed that way so that you are paying less in self-employment tax. I know this is boring, just hold on. And we'll get into this more in a, in a bit, but according to not only like the IRS website, but also the North Carolina state website, Marnie's LLC was dissolved because she didn't file the appropriate paperwork annually, like her annual report. You have to be like a year late on that. I've been, I've been like, I've paid it in October before. <laughs> That's late. That's real late. Those late fees stack up. It was like $500. I think it was more than that. Yikes. That's actually a really good reminder for me to make sure I did that this year. But like how how lazy is that, right? It's just laziness. Anyways, we'll go go more over that in a minute. But she's going to be paying more in taxes because of that. And also because she's in North Carolina that does have state income tax. Unlike Florida, we don't. I still pay a ridiculous amount in taxes though because the government hates me. Anyways, so per the IRS and at the 2023 tax rate for single taxpayers in her range, it would be about 35% for the federal income tax. And then on top of that, she has has the state income tax that is 5.25%. And then also because she is a contractor, she has a 15.3%, 15.3% self-employment tax. So she would be owing about $75,000 on her income if she, what she is claiming is correct. And that would leave her with about $150,000 annually instead of that 250. And with her spending habits, I don't think that's going to really get you very far. Enough with Red Aspen. I hate it. Let's talk about Melaleuca. Now at the end of June, 2020, you know, when she was being rightfully so called out for racist behavior and all that, she also started posting about Wellness Babe Shop Club, which is a side hustle that she had with two other multi-level marketing reps who were her friends Angela, I believe it's Angela. Yeah, Angela Polson and Christina Dimitri. And they were both in Melaleuca. Now, Melaleuca is a health and wellness multi-level marketing company. It's basically like a MLM marketplace. And unfortunately, they do really go under the radar when it comes to people knowing and realizing that it is an MLM. In August of 2020, she launched her Babe Bod paid subscription. And she said that they would film new workouts each week. And the price was going to be $29 a month introductory special pricing for that day only. And she said it would never go on sale except for like super special occasions like Black Friday. Well, guess what? The next day she announced that it was going to be $29 forever. <laughs> Like she's not even trying at this point. So then a month after launching that side hustle with her two friends on September 1st, 2021, she was saying that she was gonna be creating new content for the Boss Babe Bod Well Club Wellness Shop Club. His branding is impeccable. <laughs> and she said that she was also gonna be teaching about counting macros. Let's also be clear. Not only does Marnie a stock and hooser, not have a cosmetology license, an esthetician's license, more than five brain cells, it seems. She also doesn't have any of the qualifications or education at this point to be able to teach people about that stuff and like for it to be like ethical for her to like charge people for that and even teach them about it in general. And you can say all day long, oh, well, Chelsea, like what gives you the right? Like I've seen a comment like that before. Like you say that people aren't qualified to talk about this, this, and this, but you aren't either. And it's like, yeah, that's why I'm not talking about it. I'm not trying to teach you how to work out. I'll post what I do. But even people have been like, oh, can you like share what workout you're doing? And I'm like, no, because I'm probably doing it wrong. <laughs> no, no. Now, if you want to talk about the YouTubes or the social medias or scams or one of my other hyper fixations, I got you. Want to know about animal facts? I'm your girl. Do you know black vultures meet for life? You're welcome. And then later in the month on the 21st of September, 2020, she posted that she was doing a Teamy 30-day detox. Teamy is one of those companies that 
sells detox teas or supplements and basically just detox teas that make you poop your pants in order to lose weight. I don't know if you know this, but you don't need to do take a tea to detox your body. Your body does that. It's called your kidneys. They, they are a filtration system. So you already have those, which is great. Looking through the history and the lore of all of this, seeing things like Teamy and then like the one sunglasses company that's like Fox something and all of these companies that she's affiliated with and does undisclosed ads for is so funny because they're, and this is no shame, we all start somewhere, okay? But they're all companies that like really hound like micro influencers. If you're a micro influencer, you get it. You've received an email from Teamy before. It is, it's crazy. But yeah, so she was promoting and talking about doing a Teamy detox tea. And that is a skinny tea because you know what? Nothing says health and wellness like pooping your pants to be skinny. Things got spicy. In November, 2020, when Angela and Christina... Kristen, Christina, A, P, and C, D, the two friends that she had, Wellness Shop Babe Club Shop, that thing, the subscription thing. When those two gals were terminated from Melaleuca because they, and this is beautiful, but because they were promoting the crypto Ponzi scheme, Versage, I think that's how you pronounce it, Versage, 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 let's call it that, Versage. Wellness Babe's Shop Club comes to an anticlimactic end after this. Since then, Angela and Christina have rebranded themselves and it seems like Christina deleted her original Instagram or her original Facebook, one of those, and has changed her username multiple times. Angela seems to be taking the holistic health girl boss selling ebooks route and also recipes and workout guides. Now on her website, she's selling digital downloads for $7 and $12, but when you go into each listing, you can click on the preview of the course and just open it up in a new tab and see everything that you'd be paying for. Has no one told Angela this? Does she not have, does she not have friends? That tells me right there that she does not have friends. Like if I'm doing something wrong or like I've made a mistake or like I, y'all, I mean, y'all know, I, one, I'm dyslexic, two, I'm ADHD. I'm all, all DHD. I, sometimes I'm going so fast. Y'all know I'm usually doing things one-handed with my child. And a lot of times I'll make a mistake, it, or like a spelling mistake or like a grammar mistake in my thumbnail or in my caption or in my title of my video. And y'all will literally comment and be like, hey, like just caught this, blah, blah, blah. And like correct me. And I'm like, oh my God, thanks. And I'll like go in because you care. Does no one care about this woman? What's happening? What is she doing? I have a lot of questions because it doesn't stop there with me asking, Angela, what are you doing? However, this tracks with everything that I've learned about this person so far. These two people themselves, they I might have to do a separate video on them because it's insane. You're, you're not ready for what I'm about to say. So you know what oil pulling is? Some type of oil, like in your mouth, swish it around like mouthwash basically for like a minute, two minutes, however many minutes, right? And the claims, the benefits, whatever alleged benefits are Let's put them on the screen. Well, Angela does something called urine pulling where she does the same thing, but with her pee. So there's that in case you wanted to know that. And then this person is also the type of girl boss who thinks that she needs to take dewormer to de deworm herself to get parasites out of her intestines. And then we'll show you pictures of her duty and say things like, oh my gosh, look, there's one of the parasites. That's your intestinal lining. Unless you work with livestock or live in a underdeveloped country, which she does not. She lives in Florida. I'm in close enough, right? <laughs> but no, you don't you don't need to do that. And also, pinworms, yeah, sure, that's a parasite. You you just take you just take the medicine and wash your sheets. If you got kids, you probably are gonna have pinworms. Also, I don't think she has kids. I don't know if she had pinworms, but that shit is annoying. Yeah, so she's one of those. Checking in with Christina now, it looks like she's right on track with the MLM Boss Babe selling courses pipeline. She's selling courses on how to make millions by selling courses on how to make millions and courses about making courses and courses and courses and courses. Truly from the uh, Girl Defined Bethany Beal school of courses and courses about intercourse and courses and more courses. Now, Monate didn't think she'd be in here, did ya? Monate, as most of y'all know, is truly the hemorrhoid of my life. I think that it's gone. I think that it's dissipating. I think she's shrinking and just disappearing into darkness. And then bam, she's back and worse than ever. Monate is a multi-level marketing company that was founded by the Urdaneta family, who they suck, in October 20. 
14. They mainly sell hair care, but then they also sell wellness powders and stuff like that too, and supplements. And then also they have a skincare and makeup line. Their makeup line, let's be honest, it's basically just for white people. It's basically just for white people and like slightly, t slightly tanned people, slightly tanned white people. They have been involved in multiple class action lawsuits regarding hair loss. And then a few of those were settled. And then there's actually a few of those that are ongoing still. And the girlies will be like, it's fraudulent lawsuits. No, it's not. No, it's not. And guess what? You didn't win any of them. They're still going. Actually, I think they did win like two of them or settled. Either way, a, a lot of, there are a lot that are still ongoing. So get your facts straight, kid. Kid, who am I? A millennial. Fun fact, two years ago, I actually got access to Moneat's internal revenue reporting system because it was not password protected or behind any type of firewall or encryption or anything like that. It was just open. Anybody, literally anybody. If you had access to Google, go to the second page, you could just, you just get on in there and pull reports. So I did. I pulled a lot of them. And prior to releasing them in a few videos that are now unlisted, not privatized, but unlisted. So prior to releasing those, I sent all that information over to the FTC and then also over to the Florida Attorney General's office. And to our surprise, that resulted in Monate sending me a 30 plus page cease and desist, which is fabulous and iconic. Obviously I did nothing wrong. They're just a bunch of dum-dums that don't know what they're doing, I guess. And if you didn't want it out there, you should have password protected it. Anyways, Marnie joined Monate this year in 2024, in January, what is she doing? She, and I quote, said that she joined money just because y'all kept asking me if I had a link. So she joined. And it is really interesting because a lot of times with MLMs, you can't join multiple. You can't join ones that have like the same products. Now, Red Aspen isn't technically a competitor of Monate's. So for instance, she couldn't be in Monate and another hair care one, or she couldn't be in like a supplement one and another supplement one. But Red Aspen doesn't have that uh, stipulation in their policy and procedures. And then Monate doesn't either unless it is a direct competitor of theirs or someone within like the same industry. So thank God we're done with the multi-level marketing aspect of this video for now. And Slay Babe enters the chat. Yes, this side hustle, this ebook era of Marnie's girl bossing. Yeah, it was called Slay Babe. That's how it was branded. And no, I'm not joking. And yes, I love it because it's so horrible. And yeah, that was in 2020. Not, not 2012, 2020. I mean, I know she's a millennial, but like you're the same age as me. Why are like, why are you so out of touch? <laughs> but I am serious. That is how she branded this new girl boss side hustle. And I'm so serious that she had merch made, including COVID masks that said slay babe. Now this venture was in cahoots with either one or both of the previous the scamming sisterhood of the traveling scam, Angela and Christina. I think it was, I think it was just Angela though. In late July, 2020, they posted marketing promos of a nude photo shoot with words written on them in lipstick and thus their new business, Slay Babe, was born. And their ebook, Self Love, The Ultimate Clapback, was released. A month later, in August 2020, they launched their Affirm It Sis ebook, which was a motivational PDF with mirror post-it photos. Revolutionary, if you ask me. In the next two months, they continued with this throw some sh** on a PDF and hope that it sells trend by releasing Insta Babe to Insta Boss and finding joy in everyday tasks. In November, they announced the Slay Babe VIP membership for $7.99. I don't know if that was one time or monthly. If it's a membership though, you would think it would be monthly. And with that, you would get access to pre-recorded Zoom calls between these three scamming besties. And on New Year's, she promoted her new book, her new ebook, if you will, New Year, New You. And with that, thank God, the ebook era is over. I think she possibly stopped that because she, because like in November or like really December, the beginning of December was when she started making like a lot more money with, 
with Red Aspen because she had hit the top rank. She also had claimed that the Insta Boss, Insta Babe to Insta Boss ebook, like in the post that she was promoting it, she was saying that like, oh, it has all like the tips and tricks and how to fold in the cheese of like how we sold like 20,000 copies and like made this much money, that would mean that they would have to sell like, I think it was like 1,500 or was like 1,300 of the ebook. I don't know. I just, I find that really, really surprising. Like if that is true, then I would just think that it would be with, with the first one and not with like the following because once you see like, okay, this is not worth the money. It's just Pinterest personified and that's it. Then I would assume that the revenue from then on out would really just dissipate. Marnie has been called out for her over usage of filters for years. She has even been highlighted on multiple Reddit pages and websites showing her posted versus tagged style photos and side-by-side -side comparisons. I myself have even posted a few of them to my Instagram story and I had multiple people message me in a completely serious manner and asking me if that's a side-by-side -side of two different people. A few people were even like, oh, I thought this was like a who wore it better situation. Now, I want to be very clear. I do not think that it's right to post a side-by-side -side comparison of someone where they're wearing makeup, it filter or no filter, fine, but they're wearing makeup, it's good lighting, it's a good angle, they're posing, they're wearing two pairs of skims, a corset, whatever. They have their hair done, like, you know, all that. It's in the morning and then posting like the tagged photo, like the real them. And it's like from like a still from like a video a live stream or something so it's like not the best quality and then also it's at like a horrible angle no makeup it's bad lighting like if i'm gonna if i'm gonna try to call people out for posting before and afters completely different days times of day outfits poses makeup no makeup angles different lighting like on different locations not standing the same like if i'm gonna call people out for that i also think that we also have to call people out for the opposite end of that too so i think that's really important for instance i can look like an absolute goblin in my instagram stories and then look fire af that's her next business name fire af but i mean i can look goblinish or i can look absolutely fabulous posing good lighting two pairs of scams. <laughs> That's just important to understand. I actually talked about this in an Instagram video a reel, I guess, that I also posted on to TikTok too. And I think I made really good points in that and actually called Marnie out and another very guilty influencer out in that video too. So let's just watch that real quick. And if you are not following me across all social media, please do feel free to consider it, do it. Across all social media, I am at I am CC Soares, and that is linked down below in my link tree link. Also, if you want to join the Reddit page and become Wiggum's downline, that's my bulldog picture here. Look at him. Don't you want to join? Join his cult. He is our Lord and Savior. Feel free to do that too. Anyways, let's watch this video and we'll be right back. So I don't know about y'all, but I'm real tired of a lot of influencers editing their bodies. And then you see pictures of them and you're like, who is that? That ain't you. But I do just want to make it clear. There's a clear difference between editing yourself into a whole nother human in a different multiverse and then also knowing your good angles your good poses and having good lighting and wearing two pairs of skims if you want for instance i know that when i wear because i got a short ass torso that if i'm wearing like a looser crop top and high-waisted v's then i know that like that's going to look better also these are tummy control so listen if you see me out and i'm just like this that's also real Baby girl, who had a baby seven months ago? This girl. The camera is at like crotch level right now, right? I have my phone down on my window seal and turned over, right? This is not really a great angle, okay? Also, don't don't mind this, it's none of your business. But obviously I'm gonna look better at another angle than this angle and just standing here, bad posture, big ass titties and traps, you know, just hanging. However, if I actually roll my shoulders back, stand up straight, like I look better, right? Now, if I flip my phone over and higher up that like shoulder level angle down just a little bit. And if I actually am posing, right? So instead of just, hi, how are you? In pictures, if I am going to be posing for a picture, all my weight is on my back leg, bringing this leg forward, bending it a little bit and shifting all my weight onto here. So I'm a little bit like, uh -uh, you know, and I know personally that that looks better for me. I'm also going to have, I always tell people when we take group pictures, I'm like, ladies, nipples to the sky, because then I'm, you're arching your back just a little bit. And it's kind of like, you automatically kind of like roll your shoulders back and that 
looks better. It's obviously a difference between knowing how to pose, knowing what clothes look good on you, and then having good lighting and good makeup and wearing shapewear and whatever, and then being out in public and it's like, oh yeah, no, you just look like a normal human. Got it, cool. Versus editing yourself into a completely different human being. And that's not like, that's not okay. That's absolutely not okay, especially if you're trying to present yourself as someone who is like all about body positivity and like loving yourself at no matter, you know, what weight you're at, or maybe, you know, you're not at your best or you are at your best or just whatever, right? Whatever journey of like your body you're at, that shit's really frustrating. I've seen far too much of it on the internet. And especially if you are someone like Michaela Naguera calling her out, it's okay who is someone who their job is to review makeup, beauty products, whatever. And then like you're being paid by those companies and you're using so many filters and color grading, color grading, that's a filter. It's not just color grading, it's a filter. So why are you doing that and altering the colors of said products and the pigments of said products and like how they perform on your skin? That's not okay, that's false advertisement. I hate that shit. And then also if you are promoting, selling an affiliate for a weight loss product, using before and afters that are edited is not only going to one be false advertisement but just so messed up to present to your audience in order to just sell something but then also that's messed up to yourself because then you're gonna look back at those pictures and maybe not remember that you edited them you're gonna have a skewed perception of what you used to look like and what you look like now and then you're gonna look in the mirror when you don't have makeup on when you don't have a filter on when you actually look like yourself and possibly not love yourself and i feel like that's just so dangerous not only for people in general, for humans at all, but also just for women, especially who are, let's say in like their 20s, but even in like your 30s, especially, you know, being postpartum or whatever, just aging, aging, I don't know why I said that, but you get it. And people who, I was there as well previously, who are struggling or have struggled with not only mental health and negative self-talk, but disordered eating and any type of like negative, negative self-image or, you know, that type of mental health issue. That's shooting yourself in the foot and just continuing the problem further and further and further for yourself and that's not okay this was a long rant and i'm not sorry about it but i'm real mad about it can you tell i've been doing research on influencers who do this type of shit? <laughs> it's really frustrating like doing instagram filters sure it's fun whatever and like sometimes i'll do them too but yeah there's sometimes when like i'll put it on and i'm like this looks fucking weird that doesn't look like me and it's fine, it's all fun, whatever. And if you aren't someone who's selling something, edit your pictures, who cares? Girl, I do. I edit my pictures sometimes. There's one of us from Halloween where <laughs> the way the picture was taken and the angle it was taken at, I also had to zoom in like a good bit to like take, for privacy purposes, had to like crop it a bit. I was posing weird because I was like twisted. And then like the big ass jacket I was wearing looked so, <laughs> looked so strange. It was very, it was very weird. So I like, tucked it in like a little let's say i'm taking a picture and i don't want whoever's taking it for us to have to do like a retake or whatever and i'm i don't know my my dress is wrinkly edited that out in the baptism pictures and put a filter on it filter just you know color actual like color grading in that and like saturation edits and stuff like that to fix that but yeah if there's something in my teeth bitch i take that out if an eyelash my makeup girlies know if i have an eyelash that's like boop, popped up just a little bit because i've been filming all day or something hell yeah i'll edit that I'm also not selling those products, right? Not saying, oh my gosh, this works so well, look, right? So just, it's super unethical and I hate it and it's really frustrating and it's okay to admit that you edit your pictures. Listen, that's okay, but it has to be within like, like why are you editing it? Are you trying to make yourself look four sizes smaller than you are? Don't do that. Just embrace your body. I know it's easier said than done, but it's so frustrating and I hate it. And when influencers do it, who are selling weight loss products, like Marty Stockhausen, MLM girl, and then Michaela Naguera, who's selling, promoting, being sponsored by makeup companies or having clothes sent to her from clothing brands. If she is, I don't know, because she never tells the truth anyway, so who knows? But like, it's just so unethical and it's not okay. Can I just go work for the FTC so I can just bring down the hammer on these people? Okay, anyways, can't believe I showed my postpartum tummy. Hey, all right. Have a good day. You are beautiful. Love yourself. Easier said than done. I understand. Please know that you are valuable and you are important. And your butt looks so good. I just want to grab it consensually. I promise. That was a rant. I'm sorry. I, I had to put it somewhere. I've been, I, my brain's been going. Postpartum anxiety, okay? All right. Okay, bye. There are countless pictures of her taken hours apart where she looks absolutely unrecognizable. Even ones where the filter is glitching 
and and the coloring or like the aesthetic is still there but then the altering of the facial features is not there and that's not okay if she wasn't selling something i really don't think i would care but she is and i hate it filtering your face and body into a different person really can mess with your brain especially if you're someone who already struggles with body image which she has said that she does According to psychologytoday.com, researchers at the University of London explored the adverse effects of filters on mental health. In a sample of 175 participants with an average age of 20 years old, 90% of young women reported using filters or editing their photos. When asked what type of filters they use, most participants said the most common filters were those used to even out skin tone, brighten skin, whiten teeth, bronze skin, and reduce body size. Participants also use filters on social media to reshape their jaw lines or noses, make their lips fuller, make it look like they don't have a ridiculous amount of filler migration, and make their eyes bigger, make their makeup look better. 94% reported feeling pressured to look a certain way, and more than half described that pressure as intense. It seems that investing in editing one's self-presentation on social media is often a harmful practice for women, and the more one does it, the more damaging it tends to be. Social comparison and beauty filters may cause users to strive for unrealistic beauty standards. As a result, young people may experience a disconnection between how they look and the edited images they share with the world. This is a specific kind of self-objectification that may even lead to serious mental health conditions like body dysmorphic disorder. I have talked about this so many times, how if you are constantly filtering yourself and only like really, it's like a mask you're putting on basically to be able to present yourself to the world. But then when you're actually looking in the mirror and seeing yourself, like your brain like can't comprehend basically, like you're seeing yourself as that version when that's not real. Like, girl, your nose don't look like that. <laughs> we know. It's wild. Also, if you want to follow one of my favorite subreddit pages, r slash Instagram reality. Oh my God. It's amazing. It is wild. It's like, are these people okay? Nah, that's mental illness. So not only is all that bad for you emotionally and mentally, but it's also real bad for business. As I said before, Marnie is keeping these smudgy, blurred out filters alive, especially while promoting products. If you're promoting makeup products and then actively altering, as I said before, how the product looks, that's false advertisement. And the same goes for posting in a certain way to make an outfit look better or more flattering in order to convert those views into clicks and those clicks into sales for a 4% commission on a dress that you're probably going to return or resell. In February, 2021, the United Kingdom's advertising Advertising Standard Authority, the ASA, banned the use of misleading filters by influencers and celebrities in ads for cosmetic products. As stated in an ASA blog post, influencers and advertisers promoting beauty products, and indeed any other products, are therefore advertised to avoid applying filters to photos or videos, which are directly relevant to the product being advertised, and which are likely to exaggerate the effect the product is capable of achieving. The use of filters in ads is not inherently problematic, but it is likely to become an issue if a filter exaggerates the efficacy of the product being advertised. And it will be the advertiser's responsibility to demonstrate that that is not the case. It's obviously conceivable that an advertiser could create a filter which accurately reflects the efficacy of the product, but that responsibility would still be on the advertiser to hold evidence to show that any visual claims made are likely to mislead. Another example of scammy false advertising business practices that Marnie just really keeps doing is using like lip plumping products or lip products, things like that. And she did this, it seems quite a bit when she was in Unique, but using products that make those claims and doing before and afters, when you know well, you just got your lips filled. And let me be clear, I am very educated on injectables and med spa services and procedures and, and things like that. I love it. I love injectables. I just got my Botox did. See? Crow's feet wear. You don't see it because it's not there. And I love it. I actually got Dysport, not Botox, but still I got a wrinkle relaxer and I'll talk about it in a second too, but I just got all finally finished getting all of my lip filler dissolved so I can start fresh because I don't want to look like a clown or duck face due to filler migration, unlike some people. But there's nothing wrong with that in cosmetic procedures or cosmetic surgery or anything like that as long as you are in the right headspace and as long as your 
injector, your surgeon, your doctor is putting patient before profit. In my opinion, people who, I mean, you can just see with your eyeballs, who have filler migration like Marnie, even my mom has filler migration and I keep telling her, I'm like, I will, I will pay for you to go get it dissolved with my injector. But her injector keeps keeps doing more injections. And I'm like, you're not gonna dissolve that? What are you doing? It drives me crazy and it's not ethical and I hate it. And then also claiming that certain skincare products or collagen or powders or supplements or whatever that you are promoting as an affiliate are to credit for your skin being so beautiful when realistically you've probably had old therapy done, Morpheus 8, or which I really wanna get done, or Botox or lip fillers or BBL, not Brazilian butt lift, but broadband light treatment, facials and things like that, right? Like that you got it, you gotta mention that. You can't just say like, oh, it's only because this product, you should totally buy it and use my link. And yeah, no, that's not how that works. I don't think that Marnie will go get her lips dissolved or I mean, anything like that, because it seems like what she does is, you know, has like these like big ideas and these big dreams. And then like the thought is kind of there. The concept is kind of there, not all the way. And then the execution is just not good at all. And really, I mean, if you think about it, it's just laziness. Like this is your job. Another great example of false advertising is her constant promotion of the collagen powder supplement Trim Fit by a company called Trim U. She's posted multiple before and after photos claiming that she has lost weight and gone down in jean sizes because of this product and attributes it to her great skin and attributes her great skin to this product too. If you are someone who has gotten liposuction in your midsection previously and you are promoting a weight loss product and you are not having like an asterisk or a disclaimer, that's messed up. That is so messed up. Speaking of her lipo journey, let's get into that real quick because I have a lot to say about it. I also think it's weird that she claims that her lipo was only $5,000. I know a lot of people will say, oh my gosh, well, that's so much. Like generally speaking, yes, that's a large chunk of change. But when it comes to cosmetic procedures, I personally saw that and I was like, oh, that's not that much. She said she wasn't put under completely and just was administered laughing gas and local anesthesia, several different pain medications as well. And apparently that saved her about $2,000 too. But if you're making that much money, boss babe, why not go to a good surgeon who's actually going to do it right and do it to where they actually take out and like remove the fat cells from that area. So like, yeah, if you do gain weight, you're not going to gain weight in your midsection anymore. It'll go to like your butt, your thighs, your arms or whatever. Again, I think it's the laziness, the wanting something super quick and like that's it maybe. Also, I thought it was very interesting that anytime people would ask her about it or, you know, say that she didn't need it or, you know, that she shouldn't get it or give their opinion. Listen, you're, you're, I present yourself as a public figure. You're an influencer. You're a social media personality. People are going to give you your opinion, whether you ask for it, or if you also say, I don't want your opinion. You know how many times I had to say that when I was pregnant? and with a newborn, I still get people's unsolicited opinions. And at this point, I just ignore them. I don't block them anymore unless it's like crazy, but I just ignore it because it's gonna happen. People want to interact with you. They wanna tell you something and that's okay. Probably in the comments of this video, there are gonna be people who are like, you're too young to get a Botox or lip fillers. Or you don't need lip fillers, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, I don't care if I don't need, or if you don't think I don't need it. I don't think I need it. I love my lips, it's fine. But I also like lip fillers. I also love Botox. My body, my choice, boo. But you bet as an influencer, as a content creator, when sharing that type of stuff, I mean, that would have been so great for engagement if she actually would have answered more questions and gone in depth about it, or maybe had her surgeon like on her Instagram and like asking him questions like that people asked or something like that. Like that would have been great for engagement. But what do I know? I'm not an Insta babe turned Insta boss like Marnie is. I mean, clearly she knows what she's doing. But of course, when people asked her more and more questions, she said it wasn't her job. I mean, sure, but also like creating content is your job. So also that's easy content. You bet your ass if I ever do get a mommy makeover, not a BBL because I'm not trying to die. If I ever do get lipo in new boobies after we possibly have another kid, you bet your butt I'm bringing y'all along and making a lot of content about it. Marnie even said in a live stream that was this year. Yes, it was 2024. It was actually the video I previously did on her that was a little morsel, a little taste, a little introduction to her. She even said in that video that she didn't want to join an MLM that was like weight loss or uh, like sold a health and wellness or weight loss product. 
because she was admitting and honest to the fact that she said that she doesn't want to compare herself and she does have like body image issues, whatever. That doesn't make sense. And I called her out in that previous video too. That doesn't make sense because trim fit by trim you, that is a direct sales company. It is a single level marketing. You do sell, <laughs> you do sell a product, you do promote it. You do side-by-side -side pictures that are very misleading, but you do, you do do, you do do because that's skinny tea, but you also, you do that. So way to contradict yourself. I think the self-awareness is just not there with her. Now, something I talk about quite a bit and call a lot of people out for is being FTC compliant when it comes to being an influencer or I me mean, being in an MLM too, because they have very strict FTC guidelines that they have to abide by. But when it comes to being a content creator and influencer, we do have specific guidelines, regulations, rules, things that we have to follow. If not, we are in violation of FTC guidelines and you can be fined a lot of money. Disclosing your affiliate links. When we post something, like in the description box of my videos, it will say mentioned in this video. And then it says like, I think it says bit.ly, our style, Amazon, whatever links are affiliate links. And then I'll have them right there. That's disclosing affiliate links. That's being FTC compliant. It has to be above where they click, not below at the end of the, at the bottom of the whatever. They have to be able to see it before they click on that. Okay. When doing an Instagram story or something like that, you also need to do that. And it has to be visible. It can't be hidden. Why do that anyways? Who cares? If someone's going to click on it, if they like you, they're... In my experience, people are more inclined to support things. And I have people ask me all the time, oh, hey, do you have a Glamnetic code? Hey, do you have this? Do you have that? And I'm like, I don't. But here's a link, right? And I love that. It's very helpful to me. And I do the same thing with other influencers. But like, she does not do that. <laughs> not only has Marnie been posting affiliate links for years, she's also been posting sponsored posts on her Instagram and Facebook for the just most janky companies ever for years as well. And I have never seen her properly disclose an affiliate link or sponsored post ever. So if Marnie's watching, which let's be honest, she would not make it this far into the video. She probably hates me already. She blocked me on everything and did not answer my emails, but go off queen. Per the FTC website, they actually have a handy dandy disclosures 101 for social media influencers. So hey, feel free to send this over to Marnie. I'm just kidding. Don't interact with her. I'll send it to her. Disclose when you have any financial, employment, personal, or family relationship with a brand. If a brand gives you free or discounted products or other perks, and then you mention one of its products, make a disclosure even if you weren't asked to mention that product. Make disclosures even if you think your evaluations are unbiased. Keep in mind that tags, likes, pins, and similar ways of showing you like a brand or product are endorsements. And how to disclose. Place it so it's hard to miss. The disclosure should be placed with the endorsement message itself. Disclosures are likely to be missed if they appear only on an about me or profile page, at the end of posts or videos, or at the very bottom of a description box. You shouldn't have to scroll basically is what it's saying. It needs to be like right there. Don't mix your disclosure into a group of hashtags or links. If your endorsement is in a picture on a platform like Snapchat or Instagram stories, superimpose the disclosure over the picture and make sure that your viewers have enough time to notice it. If making an endorsement in a video, disclosure should be in the video, not just in the description uploaded with the video. Viewers are more likely to notice disclosures made in both audio and video. Some viewers may watch without sound and others may not notice superimposed words. And here's some examples of some very clear language. And I will have this PDF link down below too. I think it's very helpful. And if you want to report someone for not disclosing properly and not doing this properly, guess what? In the bottom of my link tree, I actually have the link to where you can do that. If you do report someone to the FTC, a MLM scammer, a girl boss, whoever, an influencer, anyone like that being shady on the internet, and essentially scamming, not being FTC compliant. The FTC does keep you anonymous, but they need your information so that they can ask you for more information if needed and they can follow up if needed. I've had a, a few times, I mean, I've, I'd say like 10% of the time they follow up with me. And I've reported a lot of people in the last four years because I'm tired of it. Let's talk about reckless driving and drunk antics because I hate it. Marnie films herself talking on Instagram stories while driving her car, films herself driving, and also takes pictures of her nails while doing 60 miles an hour. Nothing like posting yourself <laughs> doing the crime. And it also has been alleged that just due to like her constantly posting and like timelines and she's like out drunk and then like, you know, drinking 40 mimosas and then, you know, at brunch and then like driving home, right? Those mimosas will get you. You get bottomless and then you never find the bottom. 
been there. However, I take an Uber and my husband drives because I'm not a dumb and not reckless and not selfish and don't want to hurt anyone, myself included. Having said that, I can't say that there is concrete proof that she does drive drunk, but I will say that from what she has posted over the years and just like the timeline and how that works, like, it, it's questionable. I would not put it past her, but that's just my unsolicited opinion. It is solicited at this point. Fun fact, Marnie has claimed, offered up this information, completely unsolicited, that her Uber account was banned because she wouldn't stop touching one of the drivers she had one night in a drunken stupor. And she even went as far to stick her eyelashes on their face, like take off her own eyelashes and put them on her face. And she just thought that this was hilarious. And obviously that's super classy. Now I'm sure that we've all done some less than desirable things. Maybe some things we're not super proud of when we've had one too many. I know I've been there for sure. I've had to apologize about saying some things that I probably shouldn't have said. <laughs> Yeah. However, most people and public figures and social media personalities are not offering up that information to the internet and like putting themselves on blast and just like doing that during live streams. There have been quite, quite a lot of uh, drunken live streams that like, if you don't want to be called a drunk, don't, don't drink on the internet. And I know that like that sucks, obviously. Like you should be able to enjoy like a glass of wine or something. That's not what she does. However, Marnie has previously said that, I mean, she's gone back and forth where she's like, I'm gonna be completely sober. I'm not, I need to cut back on drinking. I have, she once was like, I'm so proud of myself. I cut myself off after two glasses of wine. I love that for her. That's amazing. And it seems like she kind of does struggle with it. And she said previously that she talked to her therapist about it. I think that's wonderful for her to try to go to therapy to figure out why, she, like figure out her relationship with alcohol basically. So I wish her the best for that and in that endeavor. Also think that it would be a great idea to not post yourself drinking as frequently as she does or as frequently as she has in the past. Now let's talk about the donation scam. I'm gonna try to find more assets for this, but I only have a few because it was mostly all over like Instagram stories, okay? So I'm just gonna read this off real quick because it's a doozy. So in November, 2022, at the start of what many people think was a donation scam, she said that she had a goal of $5,000 so that she could distribute $500 to 10 people over that following weekend. It wasn't just a weekend, it was like a whole month. So she listed her PayPal, Venmo, and Facebook pay. I didn't even know Facebook pay was a thing. She claims that she raised $1,500 in just that first day, including donations that she allegedly matched out of her own pocket. So then that really would have been $750 that she got in donations if she's saying that she matched it. And then it would equal 1,500. The math already isn't mathing and it's just the end of the first day. And keep in mind, this is the end of 2020 in the midst of a global pandemic where most people have lost their jobs, most people are financially struggling. This woman has been bragging about how she is ranking up so fast, has is making 10, 16, 15, 12,000, 15,000, $25,000 a month from her new scam. And yet she's crowdsourcing donations. If you want to donate, why would you just why would you give money to someone else to donate? Why don't why don't you just donate yourself? That makes no sense. Yet here this trollop is on social media doing this. It's crazy. So over the span of three days and asking for donations multiple times a day on her Instagram stories and even once on the toilet, she asked her followers if she should give $530 to three people or $400 to four people, which those are not equal amounts. So that doesn't make any sense. And also neither of those amounts are $1,500. Girl boss slay babe. The math is not mathing. After apparently giving away $1,600, she said on the 22nd of November that they have $455 in donations and that they planned to tip a server $300 and then spend $300 on toys. But again, that's $600, not $455. So what are you doing? That same day, she said she had around $500 to $600 to give away. Now, PayPal and Venmo were made aware that she was violating their terms of service, which is fabulous. And her Venmo had approximately $800 in it. And then it was temporarily frozen, which she said that is not her fault. And that $800 should still count towards the goal, even though there was no proof allegedly of her giving it away to anybody. Then on the 24th of November, she gives a donation update via her calculator app. And suddenly she's only raised $1,176 total. Contradicts the first day. <laughs> it makes no sense. This is the best. Lord, who, who gave this girl money? Honestly, if you gave her money for donation, I don't wanna be like, it's your fault, but there has to be some consumer accountability here. Cause yikes, 
This girl can't do math. She complains about trolls shutting down her Venmo and adds her cash app to the mix. And then the back and forth of numbers and awful attempts at math continue for another week, basically. And then at the beginning of December, after she had gotten a $25,000 commission check from Red Aspen at that point, Marnie drops off the final round of donations at a shelter along with Angela, our favorite scammer trainer who enjoys drinking her own pee. Swishing around her own pee. Let me correct myself. She then asks her followers for more donations. And then she says that God just knew that she would need a bigger car to donate more to the shelter. And that's why he gifted her a Mercedes Benz. God didn't gift you that, you bought it. Or leased it probably with her track record. And then Angela refers to the women at the shelter as battered, beaten, and abused. So her friend is just as tone deaf as she is. And then Marnie said that she wanted to go back to the shelter to teach the women about finance, which she's totally qualified to do. And she, she said that it would be better for them if she taught them about it instead of a banker. It's like, you, you know that that was just gonna be a sales pitch and she was just gonna try to recruit them into Red Aspen. And that is deserving of a one-way ticket straight to H-E double hockey sticks, because what? awful. Hey, I know you're battered, beaten, and abused and bruised right now and down on your luck and hiding out for your life. But like, how about this opportunity? How about you just girl boss your way through it? Fix that mindset. Abuse? Who knows? Who, who's that? And now let's talk about Flowergate because this one is unhinged as well. And again, is a great example of how she uh, tends to rewrite history and uh, lacks accountability and self-awareness as one does. In August, 2023, Marnie and her partner at that time, Cole, went to his friend's wedding, she was the plus one, in Atlanta. And she posted on Instagram at the end of the wedding that she, quote, stole all the real centerpieces during the bride and groom exit. Then the next day, she said that she, quote, had the bride's permission in a reel. And it has been confirmed by the groom of that wedding that she never had permission and that they were actually planning on donating the flowers from their wedding. In 2020, Three. This was 2023. In 2023, trying to take home centerpieces, who are you? That's expensive. Those are expensive. Don't do that. Also, like, you're a plus one. What are you doing? You gotta be on your best behavior, which apparently she doesn't know how to do. Now, a lot of people have said that that was probably the last straw of her and Cole's relationship and seems like he, from friends of his that have reached out to me, said that he was absolutely mortified and embarrassed and I guess just allegedly fed up. And from there, they broke up. They had been on again and off again for years, absolute years. And it sounds like she like did not treat him well, in my opinion, but you know, I'm not there every day with them. I'm not inside their relationship, so I don't know. I do wish her happiness though, and solid FTC fines. The groom wasn't mad originally, but when he saw that she had lied about asking for permission and then continued to stick to her guns in the comments section of her posts, the groom said he held his tongue about her for long enough and that this was the last straw for him. He doesn't give an F anymore. And like I said, people started calling her out in Instagram posts. And then the friend of the groom who actually like shared all of this and like the truth onto Reddit and even shared a text from him. Someone tagged that person and said, I'm dying to know how your week has been after Flowergate. And she said, oh, that's sweet. She found out who I was. So I confronted her with the text from the groom saying that she stole the flowers with the groom's permission, of course. But also I knew her personality. She called me a dumb and said that I was bitter that the groom was getting married, projecting much, and then her and Cole blocked me. I think she called me ugly too. She also lied again and said that her and Cole were on the phone with the groom at that very moment I was messaging her, and they were all laughing about how dumb and ugly I am. I can't remember which insult it was. I know it's not true because I was actually texting with the groom at that same time, and he was like, what the they did not call me. The fact that she didn't address it publicly after that indicates to me that she does know that she stole them and is really embarrassed. She blocked me before I could send her screenshots of Cole saying how hot I got since high school. Oh, sad. And I was going to go full petty, but she didn't give me the chance. It was eventful and hilarious, honestly. I love this person. That's, that's definitely my vibes. And then she said, I love it when people are caught dead in a lie. 
and all they can do is call someone names. It's a sign of ignorance for sure, yes. She's still the same bully she's always been. Can you imagine being 30 years old and calling another woman dumb and ugly? It's so effing funny. I reiterated so many times that she needed to apologize, and as far as I know, she still has not. The bride and groom are back from their honeymoon, and it looks like they had a really lovely time, and the groom and C will be handling the situation privately, more than likely. I'm spending the week working and getting ready for my in-laws to come in town, having a small get-together, celebrating me getting married in April, sort of like a bridal shower, as I'm having another wedding ceremony in the Bahamas next year. So overall, it was a great week. Thanks for asking. <laughs> I do have those texts, but I'm not gonna post those. I don't wanna seem like I was touching the poop or going against any guidelines in this thread, which is great. It would be a little bit different though, because she does know her personally. It made sense that she had lashed out like that. The groom was always just my friend, nothing else. Plus, I'm very happily married. She tried to call me Miss as if it was insulting to me. And I was like, it's actually Mrs and also add Esquire to the end. Oh, I'm in love with this person. And she just sent me this emoji as a response with the devil. Marnie really thinks she did something, huh? And she was like, C is saying that you're a dumb B. And she said, is that supposed to hurt my feelings? LOL. Not only has Marnie lied about stealing flowers, lied about getting fired from Unique, lied about multiple other things, editing her face, her body, the results of products and not disclosing anything. But let's go further into lies and tone deaf behavior. So for no reason at all, it seems like, and I would say seems like actually, but this, I mean, we have proof right here. Marnie posted an Instagram story saying something along the lines of, we'll put it on the screen, that she was wearing pants that were too tight at the ankles and the nail tech told her to take off her pants and said that she was just sitting in the pedicure chair pantsless and posted it and then someone sent it to the salon Instagram and they were like, no, that's not true. She was wearing shorts. My question is why? Why lie Why lie about that? That makes no sense and that's, e like, that's easy to disprove. And now one of my favorite things that she's ever posted is this like to know it post, this little affiliate post, you know, a little affiliate link inspo fashion mood board for grieving babes. And she didn't take negative feedback regarding this very well at all. People called her tacky and she didn't like that. She called them tacky right back. And the person who she did put on blast for calling her tacky handled it really well. And in response to Marnie, they thanked her for the shout out and said that us influencers got to stick together and then shared a discount code for their OnlyFans for their feet page that was Marnie15. Now that is a real slay babe boss girl move. And then there is the special pride event that she went to. And this was a local uh, a local brunch during pride month. It seems like she was under the impression that it was a drag brunch, which it was not. It was, it was just a pride, a pride event that was a brunch because she dressed, she dressed like she was going to, to like to a, like to a pride parade. What are you doing? It's a brunch. What? <laughs> Ugh, yikes. From all the pictures, it looks like she was the only person dressed like this and people who were allegedly there were saying that she was the only person dressed like this and so it came off as very inappropriate. To me, it's giving straight woman who keeps saying that she's, quote, basically a gay man. Does this count as cultural appropriation? Because I feel appropriated personally. And apparently she was shouting and just being obnoxious when people were sharing, like getting up at the brunch and like sharing their stories about like coming out and like sharing vulnerable things. And I say I feel appropriated because um, I am a bisexual woman, so. Now, one thing I thought was also interesting that I saw a, quite a bit of is that Marnie has presented herself as a IG boss, as a social media mogul, let's be honest, over the years. And there have been so many times where she has said that she's staying off Instagram to reset her algorithm. That's not a thing. They actually suggest that you post uh, three to five times a week. Yeah, and like using trending sounds and even on your grid posts and try to do like two grid posts a week and, you know, three, like three to five reels a week and stuff like that. And you don't have to post every day, but so there's that. But you know what? Don't just don't forget to buy her Instagram boss babe courses and ebooks and glorified PDF pamphlets, okay? Also, apparently she has been over the years posting like faking success basically and faking new recruits and like posting their names and she's been caught multiple times sharing like weird ass names like the name Kwanzaa that's obviously a extremely unique name I shouldn't have said weird sorry I have like the most white girl name ever so sharing names like that and then also sharing like that multiple times it's like how many times did Kwanzaa join your team what are you talking about and then also sharing that there's like seven iterations of the name Chelsea like that is one of the examples it's hilarious like how many do you know what are you doing? I mean, her and I are in the age range where there were 40 Britneys, five Chelsea's, and 
seven Megans in each class. Like we're the same age, so I get it, but it's also like, really? What are the odds of that? And then also there's the burner account sitch where it seems as though she forgot to switch to her burner account, her alleged burner account, before she commented on her own Instagram saying, so jealous. <laughs> You're jealous of yourself? What are you doing? Who knows? That could just be the one of her other personalities uh, having a conversation with another one, but who knows? Happens to the best of us. Now, another thing that is quite a popular topic and has been confirmed by a friend of um, one of Marnie's siblings, her sister, I believe, her older sister, one of her older sister's friends confirmed this. Allegedly, alleged, allegedly her and her siblings do have trust funds set up. Now, I know normal thought process there is like, oh my gosh, well, they're trust fund babies and they've had everything handed to them and blah, blah, blah. There are so many iterations and so many ways and so many different setups for trust funds. You can have a one-time payout. You can have a 45-time payout. I know someone who, which when I heard him say this, I was like, I want to do that for my kid. Bold of me to say that. He's not doing that. He ain't getting that. Maybe. Who knows? Probably. But I don't have like $5 in it. <laughs> but um, one of my friends that I worked with previously, his name's Chris, love him so much. But he, and he was like 40 something and his parents had it to where once he turned 21, if he made six figures a year, not from investments, from him actually working, then he got 100K payout from it. So it like matched his income. And he always said, he was like, yeah, he was like, I, he's like, I'm great at sales. And so I just do that. And then like, you know, he's like, but it's, it's great. Cause I'm not just sitting here and like, I'm actually earning it, you know, you know, pays for their first car or, you know, pays for part of their wedding or part of their house or, or just their college. And then some people it's just like $20,000. I know 20,000. I know that's still a big chunk of change too, but it can be very, very different. And from what I'm seeing and from how I've experienced this in my, in my life, and, you know, have a, you know, done a lot of research about it too, for other reasons and for this. And cause now I have a kid too, and I want to set one up for him. But with that, I don't think that Marnie and her siblings have huge trust funds and get like constant, consistent payouts just from the life that she lives and from talking to people who know her personally and who have grown up with her and who have like literally people who were bullied by her in high school and people who worked with her previously. And don't worry, we'll hear from them in a minute. But yeah, I just, I don't think that that it is what the average, you know, viewer is thinking that it is. It's it's more money, so great, but also, yeah. Now let's talk about legal threats, doxing, and harassing people. So, so July 9th, 2022, after getting pretty warranted backlash after her quite racist social media antics surfaced, she mentioned hiring a lawyer to combat cyberbullying. Let me be clear, the consequences of your own actions are, it's not cyberbullying. I do not doubt though, however, that she was harassed and sent death threats and stuff like that. No matter what, I don't think that that's, that that's okay. That's not warranted harassment, threats, stuff like that. Don't do that. Just let karma happen and, and stuff like that too, okay? And also don't go after people's sponsors because they could use that against you in regards to like a defamation case. So do never, never do that, please. But she is a public figure. She does present herself as such. I mean, by all intents and purposes, she is a public figure. She is a social media personality, okay? She is an influencer, a content creator, puts herself out there publicly. And does it suck that that's part of the job? Yeah, but it is. It is part of the job. People are going to have negative opinions about you. People are going to have positive opinions about you. If you're someone like her and you have this history of not great behavior and not a great track record and don't seem to be a great human in general, then yeah, you're probably going to have more negative than positive. If you can't handle that, I know it sucks to say this, but get off the internet. I've told people many times, you know, they'll get into a certain situation and, you know, there'll be a smaller creator and a bigger creator will be like coming after them or calling them out, whatever. And they can't handle the attack dogs or like the mob mentality, all that stuff. And I'm like, listen, if you can't, it's not worth your mental health, get off the internet. I am personally of the belief that Marnie should not be on the internet. I'm not asking for her to be deplatformed. I'm asking for her to take her mental health to have that be a priority over money. And of course, with defamation, uh, defamation of character, defamation of a public figure, uh, with defamation of public figure, you have to prove damages. And that would be extremely hard for her to prove damages regarding people on Reddit. So keep that in mind too. And then also opinions, that is the end of a def defamation claim. And then something being true is the end of a defamation claim. And if you are calling someone, um, you know, if you are saying, I think that what you're doing is racist, or I think you're racist, or I think blah, 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 like that's, 
those are those are opinions. There have been a lot of cases that have happened and a lot of case law around that that does show that those types of claims against someone, that's just opinion. One person can think that something is racist. One person can also think it's not, right? It's a matter of opinion. And now let's talk about doxing. Doxing is not illegal. If you are weaponizing it in regards to harassment and to intimidate someone, sure, then that ties into harassment. However, just doxing someone is not illegal, sucks. I think it should be, especially if you're trying to intimidate, like I said, harass or cause them harm or scare them and anything like that. However, just showing someone's DMs, showing their Instagram profile, that's not doxing someone. That's information that they put out publicly your your Instagram name is public. It is. That is front facing. Your Instagram page could be private, but your username, that's public. And then from there, if you DM someone, just don't, if you don't want anything shared and you want to be completely private, just don't DM people. That bothers me when people are like, this is doxing, that's doxing. And it's like, no, you put that information out there publicly. And also, yeah, if someone DMs me, I'm able to screenshot that and share that. So there, there do seem to be a lot of narratives or opinions or rhetoric on the internet that's like, you're doxing, you're doxing. And it's like, no, that's not what that is. However, she has done it. I'm not going to say she hasn't because she has. And she has also gone too far and harassed people. So when someone had reported her to the Tennessee board for allegedly charging, and she did provide services, but allegedly charging, um, providing services for bridal makeup, special event makeup without a cosmetology or esthetician license, which you have to have in Tennessee and also in North Carolina to do so. Otherwise, I can't do that. She received a letter with the complaint, which I also think is pretty messed up that they did not redact the person who reported her. They didn't redact her information and that's not great. And then of course, over the years, there have been multiple, multiple times where she has said that she's going to sue for harassment and says that she's going to sue for cyberbullying and for bullying and for libel and defamation. And I've looked it up under either of her names, Marnie Wilson, Marnie Elizabeth Wilson, Marnie Elizabeth, Marnie Elizabeth Stockhausen, ha Marnie Elizabeth Holiday Who Be Whatty, there is no, <laughs> there's no court filing. So like you're not doing anything. Otherwise that would be public, like you'd be able to find that, that'd be public information. So it really just seems like that is a scare tactic that she will use. Or hey, maybe she does talk to someone and they're like, no, that's not how that works. Maybe she should talk to Jeanette Braun because that lady does not, does not stop. <laughs> that lady's just as delusional as she is. Now, this is from someone who reached out to me who, the, this is pretty crazy. So they reached out and they said, I'm so happy you're doing a deep dive on this unhinged person. I'm an active user on the subreddit page. And one day I accidentally posted something with my Instagram username. Big no, no, be careful. From there, Marnie and her bestie, JT, tried to call me on Instagram and Facebook. Marnie then found my place of work and talked to my manager saying that she's an influencer and I've been harassing her for three years and that she has proof and screenshots. Someone posting their opinions of you on the internet is not harassment. That's someone having an opinion. Someone needs to buy a dictionary. My manager was very confused and Marnie, it's so weird using her name because <laughs> that's one of the rules of the subreddit is that you just use initials, you don't use her name, uh, got frustrated that she wasn't getting results she wanted. So she said she would call later and talk to a higher up. As far as I know, this never happened and I never heard anything about it again. I had a few days where I really thought she was gonna show up at my work and cause chaos. I wouldn't put it past her, that's really crazy. Um, now here's some other testimonies before we wrap it up, because I think these are very interesting. So this said, I somehow stumbled upon the subreddit group and I had been told by other locals that I was just being judgy when I refused to accept her behavior. No one listened to what I knew. Prior to her influencing era, she was married. Her now ex-husband is an acquaintance of mine. I do know that when the divorce started happening, he either gained full custody of or was in the process of gaining custody of his child. The rumor mill was milling, and I can't say with 100% certainty, obviously we don't know that any of this is true. It's just anecdotal evidence, which is all alleged was that she was getting divorced because he was getting custody of his child. He was not the one to initiate it though, that's very sad. From my understanding, he was devastated and heartbroken and was spiraling pretty bad. He's now doing fantastic, remarried, and a preacher, whoa, plot twist. Good for him. And got his life right back on track. When she posts pictures of their wedding years later, it infuriates me when Marnie posts pictures of their wedding. That's weird. Why does she do that? It infuriates me. I know she's just doing it to be disrespectful to his new wife. Move on, sis. It was like nine years ago. Back in 2021, during Christmas time, she was doing 
this giving spree. I vividly remember watching her give the waiter a large sum of money for a tip. She couldn't do it without recording, right? I mean, needed to show proof. While that waiter was a member of Barflies, I don't know what the barflies is. I've seen him interact with her with my own eyes prior to this. I've seen him in her stories before and after. How generous. Oh, that's gross. I just saw today that the old Tiki Talker, uh, that another influencer, coincidentally an old unique peddler ex-husband hitting on, ooh, gross, was hitting on Marnie in her comments. I'm not entirely sure, but it seemed like there was beef between these two boss babes a long time ago. I might be mistaken, but I think there was. Also, she looks like Brad Mondo. All right, and then here's someone who worked with her previously in their 20s, and the person's also friends with the ex and all that. Uh, and she says, I just know that people around her, because I asked, like, how do people in her area, like, react to her? because she acts like she's just the best, in my opinion, from what I've seen. And she said, I just know that people around her who know her also think that her behavior is super cringy. Regarding her stealing these flowers from the wedding, the groom was really close friends with her ex, and I fully believe her stealing the flowers and humiliating herself amongst real people who actually know them had to be the final straw. And then another person, this one is crazy, said a couple years ago, Marnie learned through an acquaintance of mine that I was allegedly in the subreddit page. The story about this acquaintance who is also just as unhinged and now I have a protection order against them is a whole thing of its own. I want to hear that. But basically this is very limited and alleged information was all Marnie needed to go real life. Literally coming from my job, she tried at least. I was a few weeks into a brand new job and I was really excited about it. I was working reception and received a call and it went something like this. Me, thanks for calling blah, blah, blah. How can I help you? Marnie, hi, is there a this person's name that works there. And she said, yeah, that's actually me. And Marnie said, well, that's perfect. This is Marnie, Marnie Stockhausen. Do you know who I am? And this person said that she was very shocked. And she said, I'm sorry, I don't. Is there a way I can direct your call? And Marnie said, oh, really? Are you sure? And she said, yeah, I'm sure. Is there anything I can assist you with? And she said, no, girl, we're good. You'll be hearing from me though. And she said, okay, Marnie, have a good day. And she said, you too. Um, this person said that her whole body was literally numb. How did this woman who lives in a different country and I'd never contacted before know where I work? Still in shock, I answered a couple more calls. I do have an anxiety disorder and soon slipped into an inconsolable panic attack. I probably would have too. And messaged back up for reception. Then I called my manager, hyperventilating and barely able to speak. It was a difficult situation. How do I even explain this absurdity to them? I don't even remember what I said, but thankfully she was super supportive. Next day, I was able to better explain what happened. Seriously, can't thank my manager enough. Email was then circulated to the entire organization with Marnie's photos, filtered and raw, as there is such a stark difference, Lord. And the requirement that if she contacted anyone or was ever seen on site, that the doors would be locked and health and safety to be notified right away. The field I work in is very serious. So the fact that she clogged up our phone lines, not to mention wasted the organization's times and resources could have been someone who really needed immediate help. And that still bothers me. Um, I feel like she's going to gain some sick satisfaction in knowing how her actions affected me, but I guess I would, I guess that would be the reaction of a narcissist. So whatever, this story is a reflection on her and not me. So it feels empowering to tell it. I'm happy I could be a part of that. And then this little testimony is someone who went to school with her and they said, I was seeing someone that she knew, not in an, an illicit manner, just some, and I clarified this with the person, someone that Marnie had met previously, just someone she knew of, very strange. And she had a personal vendetta against me for that. And in true mean girl fashion, she announced loudly and proudly to anyone who would listen, including through all social media platforms. She slandered my name, made vague threats about beating my butt, bad word for butt, and God knows what else. I only knew her name. We had never had a conversation before this or after. For years, she had it out for me and I have never even spoken to her. Um, and this one is one of my favorites. So this person was in Unique with Marnie and she was in the same organization, the same downline. So if the downline is like a family tree, Marnie was the Y sister, the sideline, if you will, of this girl's upline. And she even, she sent me pictures and stuff to prove that she, that this is true. So this is this person's experience, just like all the other ones are. Anecdotal evidence. So, all right. So this says, I actually followed Marnie because she was in my upline. So she was my main upline's Y sister. That's what they called it. I followed Marnie before I ever joined Unique. She grew really fast and went up the ranks at an incredibly high speed. 
like a rocket ship. She came off bubbly, funny, relatable, and honestly, in the beginning, she seemed really genuine. She was actually working for a med spa at the time, and she helped administer Botox, fillers, and all that stuff. At first, she was transparent about getting minor stuff done, but later, she would hide the work that she's had done. And of course, when you're selling makeup, this is a problem, especially when you are posting before and afters of Lip Plumper and make people believe that it is a miracle product, when in reality, you just had lip filler done. She was very successful with lives and could generate a lot of views and she would have at least a thousand people or more watching every single day. I later found out that she would join all of these crazy engagement groups and share all of her live streams in there to everyone. Also, it was mainly people who were already enrolled as unique distributors viewing the live streams. So people who you can't sell to. That is a closed loop if I've ever heard of one. In the summer of 2018, I went to the Unique Convention in San Antonio, Texas, and that's where I met Marnie. I looked up to many of these ladies and really believed that I was going to be successful, and I was in deep. When she first arrived, some people in our team were gonna go meet up and hang out on that first day. Everyone was talking about how Marnie had been drinking on the plane and was pretty much drunk and making an ass out of herself. The whole trip, the only thing people could talk about was Marnie and her shenanigans, drinking being loud and belligerent. Finally, I met her and even tried to get a picture with her and she acted like she was a celebrity. She kept saying stuff like, I can't take pictures with everybody or she would just ignore people. She was completely self-absorbed. We had a team dinner one night and I got to witness firsthand her act like a drunk idiot. I couldn't believe it. She was a fraud. I stayed with Unique for almost two years after that. I even went to another convention and yes, Marnie was at that one too. She got worse and worse the more money she made. It became apparent Everything she did was for views, attention, and money. Well, yeah, I mean, she's an animal M, right? She doesn't know who she is anymore because she must keep up the act. She cares about no one but herself. She's so messy now. She's on my Facebook and Instagram, and she went through some messy relationship stuff recently and even admitted to having a slight drinking problem, admitting it's the first step. End note. <laughs> Marnie is a fraud. She selfishly takes advantage of good people. I can assure you that she does not give two about her team or people's lives that she may be ruining. She's greedy and an attention seeker, and it's all about her. She will do and say anything to make a sale. Who you see in those videos is so far from who she really is. I'm not sure she even knows who she is at this point. And that is it for the testimonies. I would just like to say, that's a doozy. <laughs> I had been suggested to cover her. People had been tagging me in the, sub, in the subreddit for what seemed like years, honestly. And at first glance, I was like, she's just posting about nails or like, she's just posting makeup. And then the more and more I looked into it, I was like, oh dear God, what's happening here? Of course, I do just want to reiterate. I wish nothing but the best for this person. I don't want her to be a scammer. I don't want her to have body image issues. I think that she should be held accountable for all of the unethical things that she's doing. And I can call her out on those things, but then also still wish the best for her. And I can also like kind of roast her a little bit too, right? Two things can be true at once. So please keep that in mind. Also, if you've made it this far, please in the comments below, Wiggum is my Lord and Savior. That's W-I-G-G-U-M. W-I-G-G-U-M. Thank you. That's my bulldog. Yeah, I, I hope that this person stops doing unethical things. I am sure we will probably have a follow-up to this deep dive, as we usually do, because these people truly can't help themselves. And please do not interact with this person. Don't do that. Keep yourself safe. Try to make sure that your private and personal information is protected. I appreciate all of the help that y'all um, y'all really came through with information for this video. I really appreciate you. Please do make sure that you are following me on Instagram. On Instagram stories, that's where, you know, a lot of the times I'll do call outs for information for like deep dives and stuff. And I really appreciate y'all. The girlies on Reddit, the unique presenter MS subreddit page really came through so, 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 so helpful. And I honestly could not have done this video without them. And I really appreciate them. They've been putting in the work for sure. Subscribe if you feel so inclined. I definitely appreciate it. My goal for this year is to hit 150,000 subscribers, which is crazy. Remember to remain FTC compliant. Remember that your feelings are valid and that your butt looks really good. I see it. Look at that thing. Ugh, like two ripe cantaloupes. So, mm. I just can't stop thinking about it. It looks so good. Remain assertive. Above all else, stay spicy. If you subscribe, that's how you can remain eternally spicy. So leave that down below too. Say I'm eternally spicy and I'd appreciate it. Uh, share this video if you want. And I hope you have a great day, night, weekend whenever you're watching this. And I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye.